Good evening ladies and gentlemen you're watching NDTV Multinational companies in Karnataka will be asked to display on their premises the number of Kannadigas they employ This is what the state's culture minister Shivraj Tangadagi said on Wednesday in a move that is being seen as controversial Now IT minister Priyank Kharge has meanwhile pointed out that there are already laws in the state to ensure employment is provided to those who have lost land for projects as well as to make sure Kannadigas get preference in employment Now Bengaluru is a city to which people have flocked for ages for jobs education and opportunity it has been known for cosmopolitan culture that often frees middle class migrants of any obligation of learning the local language it's also the startup capital the dream city for many engineering graduates from lower middle class and poor backgrounds how in that case will a policy like this work is it even possible for companies to display the names of all the locals that they employ will it breed more language pride or chauvinism Does this move to benefit sons of the soil or daughters of the soil infringe on an individual's rights to make a living where his or her merit is valued or even constitutional rights of employers how will the courts look at it remember courts have not been favorable towards states implementing domicile reservation especially in the job sector let alone the politics of it how will it affect the prospects of brand bengaluru that's what we ask tonight we have a panel of guests with us but first let's listen to what priyank kharge the it minister of karnataka said in response to the policy he is merely stated that all those things will be looked into there is no act as of now there is no demand from either an industry or from the people when uh, the uh, issue of 60% of kannada uh, should be used on billboards uh, or the uh, name boards came up there were other suggestions that has come up from the members of the council and the assembly that's all it is not at a rule or it's not at uh, at the singular it will be discussed we ultimately we are uh, here to ensure that more investments come to karnataka more job opportunities are created for kannadiga and more uh economic prosperity happens for karnataka joining me to discuss this is dr samir kagalkar who's the spokesperson of the bjp and also convener of the economic uh, cell in bjp karnataka we also have professor sanjal shastri who's the assistant professor of flame university and we also have rituparna <laughs> chakravarti who's the co-founder of uh, team lease thank you all of you for joining me on this uh, show let sure. me start with you ms chakravarti you know a large part of the budget that chief minister sidharamaiya presented re- recently it was a 15th budget was all about enhancing the brand power of bengaluru in that regard don't you think a policy like this can actually make investors wary of the state thank you so much uh, for having me on the show uh, the silver lining is and if i'm not mistaken that so far it's a suggestion and it's still not uh implemented uh i could be wrong but that's what i gathered and i just hope that it remains as a suggestion because um on one hand we want to enhance the brand of bangalore we want to enhance bengaluru whatever we choose to call it we want to attract more investments and then a move like this is completely against the spirit of meritocracy building competency uh as is required for the kind of investments we are looking for so i think it's going to be a terrible blow something like that i'm also not particularly sure that why we are calling out multinationals especially because that's like a direct jab into any prospects of foreign investments or uh organization i mean organizations outside of india want to look at mangalore as a possible and honestly uh it def- completely defeats the constitutional right of every citizen uh we have seen such moves come up in different parts of the country in different states but honestly at the end of the day uh it's a matter of demand and supply even in com- in terms of employment i mean if you have a certain requirement any employer would prefer to first look at locals but if they do not get the skill set they do not get the volumes that they're looking for is when they would like to hire people from outside and that's always been the case because it's not easy for people to move from one state to another state uh lodging you know getting acclimatized with the weather the food the culture it's never easy but then we we just make adjustment based on what the need of the are we the need for meritocracy so i don't think this is practical at all i mean i know in pockets many people try here and there but right. i'm not pretty i'm not sure how it helps bangalore um i mean bangalore by the way is one of the largest largest 
uh, earners or service um, GST today. I mean, maybe the second largest in the country. And um, that happens because of this culture that has been created of the ecosystem of openness where anyone can come and do business. And it, uh, okay, all let me those take this uh, question to uh, Sanjal Shastri. You know, let me also get into the politics of it. You know, with elections approaching, Congress government seems to be also you know, doubling down on its efforts to promote Canada subnationalism for non-Canada speakers. Of course, this is linguistic chauvinism. We saw 60% signages Canada rule come about a few days ago. And now we, we're seeing, you know, of course, this is just a suggestion. We've also seen ministers like Priyank Kharge come out and play the balancing act between, say, attract, attracting investments and also promoting regional pride. But the politics of it, uh, uh, Mr. Shastri, how do you see this playing out? Um. I mean, in terms of when you look at it with the, you know, the main competitor for the Congress, the BJP, it's almost like uh, you're pay playing a sub-nationalism versus a pan-India nationalism, which sort of BJP, uh, that's a BJP's plank. And this is sort of, uh, you know, an alternative plank where you're trying to in evoke a sub-nationalism of Canada linguistic identity. Uh, and you saw that even in the last year's Lok Sabha, I mean, the Vidhan Sabha elections where you had... Uh, that time it was not about signboards or about uh, employees in MNCs, but it was about this Nandini versus Amut. But ultimately, it was hinting at the same thing of trying to, uh, you know, tap into this Canada identity with this, you know, the sub-nationalism that is, uh, you know, uh, for all practical purposes is a very important uh, factor at the local level, particularly in Bangalore city and in regions outside of Bangalore. Uh, Dr. Kagalkar, let me ask you this question that, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Shastri also uh, looked into. Now, in March 2018, government of uh, former, I mean, government of present Chief Minister Siddharamaya had also unveiled this proposed uh, official state fa flag for Karnataka. And I know there was a lot of controversy over this. And like Mr. Shastri pointed out, we've seen Amul versus Nandini controversy also play out. Now, your party is also talking in terms of Hindu consolidation, welfare. So how do you see this Kanadiga push? You know, do you see this as a compulsion for the Congress party? And I'm sure BJP also finds it very difficult to oppose a policy like this because at the core of this is, is Kanadiga pride, which you cannot negate. Uh, Vasudha, uh, thanks so much for having me on the show. The point is absolutely evidently clear. Point number one, the Congress is completely headless, leaderless, like a headless chicken. You have no other state apart from Karnataka and Telangana where you can have a modicum of five being there in the Lok Sabha. You have no other presence anywhere else in the country. So it's a desperate situation for you to sort of retain the two states with some decent, if not a great show, but some decent show, decent show as in two, three, four kind of numbers in Karnataka. And that's where the sense of desperation comes for Mr. Siddharamayan. And as uh, the other panelists have rightly pointed out, if you look at what Siddharamaya has been doing, you know, it's so ironical. He goes all the way across the globe to the World Economic Forum to invite some industrialists who are based out of Mumbai and Delhi to come and invest in Karnataka and Bangalore. It can't be more ironical than this, right? You go all the way to the World Economic Forum, invite uh, Gujarati, Maharashtra, North Indian businessmen, come and invest in Karnataka. You would want to build a brand, Bangalore, which is international in stature. Say, Mr. D.K. Shukumar, who is coming right on the uh, screen. He wants to build Bangalore to win international stuff. How do you build an international brand? You don't build an international brand by being exclusive, but by being inclusive. Right. Inclusive of not only the outsiders, but also the in insiders as well. Now, right. coming to the Amul versus uh, uh, Nandini kind of a thing. What was the outcome of it? Three months, four months down the line. Kerala government did exactly what Siddharamaya did to uh, Amul. Right. The Kerala government said Nandini is no more welcome in Karnataka. Dr. Ka Ka right? Ka that's, a, that's a very good point. All our guests have Absolutely. actually made very interesting points. Let me go across to my colleague Pratibha Raman and listen to what the people of Bengaluru actually feel about this. I'm here right at the center of Bengaluru and I'm going to talk to people about how they find Bengaluru as a place for people from other cities to work in. Is it really cosmopolitan in nature and is it really cutting out job opportunities for Kanadigas? Just yesterday, Kannada Culture Minister had spoken about how uh, every MNC must put up boards in their premises talking about the number of Kanadigas who they have employed. 
Now, will this really kill the work culture in a city like Bengaluru, known to be a startup capital as well as IT city? Let me see if I can go across to a few people here. Sir, excuse me, do you work here in Bengaluru? Huh? Do you work here in Bengaluru? Uh, yeah, ma'am. How do you find the work culture here? Uh, it's good. Yeah. Are you a Kannadi girl? Yeah. Yeah. So many people talk about how there are migrants coming in and they do not have enough job opportunities here. Do you feel like that? Mm. Yeah, yes. It is so. Yeah. So would you really like it if more Kanadigas would get employment opportunities and there is a law or a rule for it? Uh, like I feel like if they have talent then definitely they should get the job. Right. Uh, rather than other taking the job. It's really, you know, mm -hmm. they should get that. Yeah. So more of merit. Thank you so much for this. More of people with merit as well as being a Kanadiga playing into the pride must actually, there needs to be a fine balance is what we hear. Let me see if I can pick up another person. Sir, are you from Bengaluru? Do you work here? Yes. Okay. Are you a Kanadiga? Yes. Yeah. Uh, do you feel that there are enough job opportunities for Kanadigas because many of them feel that there are migrants coming from outside and taking away their job opportunities? Is it so or is, is there a fine balance? See, first of all, when it comes to job uh, creation or existing job market, uh, everything goes on merit. Nobody does the bias. Uh, at least corporate India is cultured enough I, and matured enough to place people who are uh, merited and doesn't particularly uh, be biased on particular uh, you know, section of society. So I think there are enough and more opportunities if people really want to come in and uh, get their bit of the this job. This comes because a Kannada culture minister did speak about how MNCs must put up boards talking about the number of Kannadigas who have been employed. Mm. Do you think this will kill the cosmopolitan culture? This will put a stress on MNCs here? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, it's rubbish uh, expecting that someone would be uh, wanting to have a reservation sort of uh, arrangement. Uh, it only kills the meritorious and uh, puts unnecessary pressure on the cosmopolitan vibe of the city. And being myself a Kannadi guy, I definitely feel that uh, it's well beyond time that people start uh, coming out of such a mindset and uh, explore what Bangalore is really for the cosmopolitan vibe. Thank you so much for this. So let me see if I can uh, go across to a few more people. So it is pretty interesting to note that there are Kanadigas who feel that merit will really win. Uh, sir, are you from Bangalore? Yes. Do you work here? Yes. Yeah. Do you feel that, uh, you know, Kanadigas aren't given enough job opportunities? Yes, very much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm the a Kanadiga. Okay. Yes. Because the Kannada minister has said that uh, there needs to be more job opportunities for Kannadigas and MNCs must put up boards talking about how many Kannadigas are employed. Uh, Kannadigas are uh, most uh, most of the Bangalorean uh, are Kannadigas mm -hmm. and some outsiders are uh, techies. In uh, uh, Bangalorean also there are many people are working here. Mm -hmm. So yes, I do agree with that. We should get an opportunity as a Kannadiga. Okay. So here is a person who feels that he should get an opportunity. Ma'am, will you like to speak a few words? Do you feel that uh, as a Kannadiga, the job opportunities are being snatched away by people from outside? Yes, yes separately, yes. Okay. And do you feel that there needs to be a reservation of sorts? Yes. Okay. For Kannadiga, at least minimum percentage has to be there. So minimum percentage for Kanadigas, most of the Kanadigas here uh, seem to be finding uh, a, a balance between merit and uh, uh, between uh, reservation for Kanadigas. Are you a Bangalorean? Do you work here? I am I mean, I work here, but I am not Bangalorean. Okay. Where are you from? I am from Gujarat. Okay. Uh, see, we are talking about how people from outside find Bengaluru when it comes to the work culture. Do you find it very welcoming? Yeah, it is good. Work culture is good. People are good here. Like, they are straightforward. Uh, weather is also good. Overall, it is good, yeah. Well, there is a minister here who has said that uh, many of the MNCs must put up boards talking about how many Kanadigas have been employed in their companies. Do you feel that this will kill the cosmopolitan culture that Bengaluru is known for? No. No. Yeah. Do you feel that, you know, this reservation for Kanadigas is something that that will kill the people who have merit and talent? No, ma'am. I don't think so. So you feel that Kanadigas must also be given enough opportunities? Yeah, because they are like uh, localites. Uh, so 
they must be given uh, this kind of benefit or opportunities well there it is mixed reactions that we pick up in bengaluru while some of them do feel that there needs to be some amount of reservation here there are others who feel that you need some amount of uh, 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 conditions to be applied when it comes to merit as well as talent as well there are a few outsiders who did speak about opportunities for kannadigas there were some who said that the cosmopolitan culture of bengaluru needs to be maintained but all said and done there is enough stress on companies as well as employees when it comes to a state like karnataka as well as a city like bengaluru with camera person kumar pratibaraman in bengaluru for ndtv so mixed views there of uh, youngsters some of them saying that uh, you know policies like this will impact uh, the culture of the city and others actually uh, saying that uh, this might uh, not be great uh, let me uh, let me go across to uh, samir kagatkar uh, sir how do you feel about something like this but also let me ask you what will be the impact of such policies on working class population because you know they are the ones who often bear the brunt of uh, you know such chauvinism so in other words how can a state protect its language and culture make people living there learn its language without you know the whole of it becoming an imposition and reason for violence quick three or four points point number one may i request mr shivraj tangadigi if at all he is listening to it it's not probably i insist that he listen and he as a part of the congress party put up a board that says out of the three rajya sabha seats that are going to poll in karnataka how many are from karnataka how many north indians ajay makan is he from karnataka why is the karnataka rajya sabha seat being given to a north indian point number one point number two sidramayya has recently done budget very very subtly shrewdly cleverly puts across a view point what is it he says all the government schools will hence forth to become bilingual on the one hand the government of india is saying nep that is the education policy must stress in the local languages here sidramayya who claims on the rooftop that he is going to promote kannada culture making the government kannada schools bilingual point number 3 Mr. Sidramayya should needs to understand, and his ministers should understand. Forget MNC; that will come to it a bit later. You go to any old Kannadiga run restaurant, except probably one or two like good old Vidyarthi Bhavan, wherein all the people who are there are Kannadigas. You go to any other hotel restaurant, you don't find any Kannadiga serving there. You go to any big apartment, none of the service providers are Kannadiga there. Why is that happening? Okay, Why let me let me let me, let me take this that question. Let me take this question to Ms. Chakravarti. Ms. Chakravarti, yeah. you know there is a point that uh, Mr. Kagarkar, Dr. Kagarkar is making, but of course you you listen to the youngsters of uh, Karnataka. Tell us how how what kind of impact does policies like this have an impact? on on the city's culture you know because karnataka i mean bengaluru for long was known as the retirement destination for elites and now it's the it hub so in some ways the culture of the city has also been changing but how do you think this will impact the lives of you know the working class population because the people that we spoke to of course you know are not the working class population who often have to bear the brunt of you know violence that such chauvinism can lead to that i think is uncalled for and i think whether you come up with a policy of this sort or not the basic protection of every indian no matter which part of the country is given so if this leads to violence i think uh, it goes without saying that every 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 such resource every such uh, employee or every such person who's in bangalore today deserves the right to be protected but i think the bigger challenge is that i mean i know that you have uh, uh, i have a co-panelist who's also a politician the problem is that sometimes um um i mean this is something irrespective of which party you have allegiance to to be honest has been right done or tried out to the one's advantage based on the situation i mean i've heard recently haryana government came out with something yeah. similar So I actually would request everyone, especially everyone in politics, that take a pause. I okay. Think. Okay. Last word from uh, Sanjay Shastri. You know, like Karuthapanna also pointed out, courts have not been favourable. We saw Punjab and Haryana High Court quashing a law, you know, that was passed by Haryana government that provided that called for providing seventy five percent reservation in private jobs. Similar thing happened even in Andhra Pradesh. So courts have not been favourable to this domicile reservation policy. So how does how do state governments, politicians, or even activists? or language uh, activists actually you know find a balance between protecting the state's culture at the same time also ensuring that those who want to make a livelihood in the city are not really uh, sort of humiliated or uh, harassed 
See, uh, the idea of protecting culture or also uh, allowing locals to get opportunity. Now, that's a genuine concern. And the, the ways that, you know, the investing in education, setting up proper educational institutions, good educational institutions in smaller towns, in, uh, you know, districts outside of uh, Bangalore. Now, these are ways in which you can have targeted policies which help, uh, you know, local Kannada youth actually get the skill set that is required to compete in a cosmopolitan setup like Bangalore. Now, these are the policies that are actually going to help, uh, you know, Canada youth. And if you want to protect the interests of Canada youth, these are the policies that are going to be more effective. Not the idea of setting up reservations, which, of course, as was rightfully pointed out, has been, you know, uh, disallowed by the High Court, Haryana High Court. So uh, the, the answer lies in getting policies, you know, allowing youth in Karnataka, Canada youth, to get the skill set. Now, for that, government can make policies. That is, of course, a very good approach to handling this issue.